Patrick Matthews. Hey everyone. My name is Patrick Matthews. I'm a project manager for a major software company. I'm also a frequent contributor to online communities, uh, mainly social media sites and online question and answer forums such as Experts Exchange. Being a participant in communities has made me more effective than I could have been otherwise in, in my job. So for me, it's been a force multiplier. I'm going to talk about how community involvement and engagement can be a force multiplier for yourselves, for your teams, for your organizations. What is a force multiplier? A force multiplier is any factor or set of factors that can amplify the effectiveness of a group to give it the power of a larger group. It's a term that originated in the military. We're going to talk about how community involvement can be force multipliers for you. So what are force multipliers for technical professionals? Knowledge and skills, specialized training, deeper knowledge, you know, hard to find know-how, enabling you to do your job better, faster, more efficiently. Experience, best practices, practical know-how of what works, what doesn't, how to get things done, adherence to best practices and standards so that people following you will be able to you know, pick up where you left off and build on the work that you did. Technology having the right tool to do the job. In some cases, using technology to eliminate lower value tasks or automate routine low value tasks so you can focus your time and your energy, your resources on the things that matter more or deliver more value. Speed, finding the information you need faster or getting your tasks done faster so that you and your team can move on to bigger and better things. How have I benefited from community involvement? You know, most of my community involvement has been as a, an expert contributor at sites like Experts Exchange and also in the Microsoft MVP program. Participating in these communities has made me much more effective in my day job than I ever could have been you know, w without that community engagement. Knowledge and skills. I've been able to learn things, pick up new skills that I either never would have picked up on my own or would not have picked them up you know, as quickly or when I needed to get them. Experience and best practices. I have the ability to tap into the experiences, the practical know-how, the knowledge of what works and what doesn't from experts all over the world, sometimes in the same field as me, as often as not, not in the same field as me, but being able to reach out to that community makes me much more effective. Technology. I've had the opportunity to get exposure and insight into new technologies, updated technologies. Sometimes it's not even a, a software product necessarily. It might be a new technique at solving a problem. It might be something where it's not even a new technology, but it's a feature I wasn't aware of, or I didn't realize I could use that feature to solve the particular problem I was trying to solve at the time. But being able to talk to other experts out there showed me that, you know, yes, I could apply it. Speed. Sometimes it really is just a matter of getting something done faster. There are plenty of times where there's information that I need to get or there's a task that I need to do that I could do on my own if I had to or if I wanted to, but being able to reach out for help in communities enabled me to get it done faster so that I could move on to bigger and better things. Giving and taking. You know, just like in a marketplace, you need both buyers and sellers to have a healthy community, a thriving community, you need to have a balance between giving and taking, people who are contributors and people who are receivers. It, it's not even necessary that that balance between giving and taking, between being a contributor and being a receiver, be balanced at the level of each individual in the community. In fact, depending on the nature of the community, it might not even be healthy to try and reach that balance. Most of my online uh, community involvement is in question and answer forums. You see a pretty clear distinction in those forums between the people who are usually asking the questions and the people who are usu usually answering the questions. You don't want to have a balance between those two groups of members because you want the people giving answers to be the ones who actually have answers. And if you're asking most of the time, you probably don't have the answers. 
So it, you know, there are times when you don't want to have that balance realized at each individual level. While the benefits to the receivers might be kind of obvious, you know, I get my question answered, I get my problem solved. It's less obvious, you know, what the benefits are to the contributors, but, but there are benefits. They're, they're just not the same as what the receivers get, and we'll, we'll see some more about that in a moment. So what, what are some of the benefits of contributing? Sometimes I am a receiver in my interactions in the online community. I ask a question, I bring a problem that I'm looking for help with. More often, I'm the one answering a question or providing a solution in the online community. So I'm, I'm a net contributor. So, you know, why do I do it? What's in it for me? You know, the benefits of being a contributor are less tangible than for being a receiver, but, but they're no less real. Reputation. You know, participation in online communities can be a really great way to burnish your reputation, get your name out there, get recognized in the marketplace. It can be a form of marketing where instead of investing cash, you're investing your time, your organization's time, your expertise. Referrals. You might find that as your reputation increases in online communities, it could lead to additional referrals. It could lead to new business. I know lots of people in the communities that I participate in who get some, most, even nearly all of their referrals in new business from their online interactions. They help somebody with a low-level problem, and it leads to a, you know, a bigger consulting arrangement where they, they get asked to, to tackle a larger problem. Training and development. For me, this is probably the most important one. It's the reason why you know, I've stuck with community involvement. It's the reason why I still do it all these years later. I've found over the years that the single most effective way for me to learn new things, develop new skills, has been helping other people by answering their questions, helping them solve their problems. You know, classroom training is great at times. You know, book learning is nice at times. I'm more of a hands-on guy, and I find that answering other people's questions, even on stuff that can look elementary at first glance, gives me a better understanding of the stuff that, you know, I'm answering the question on. You know, it makes me more effective, and, and I often will see new and better ways to, to solve those problems. And satisfaction. You know, let's face it, a little ego boost is a nice thing every once in a while. Uh, it really makes my day when I answer someone's question and, and they reply with, wow, man, you just saved me like 12 hours with that. It really makes my day. It gives me a, a charge for, for the, you know, the rest of the work day. It gives me better morale, boosts my confidence. Why communities at all? You know, we've got the Internet now. It is huge. It's enormous. If you're willing to look long enough and hard enough, Chances are you're going to find whatever it is you are looking for. So why bother with communities? Why is it important? One factor is trust. You know, trust matters. When you're in a community, you might not ever meet some of the people that you interact with, but over time and over multiple interactions, you can build a certain level of trust. It becomes apparent fairly quickly who the leaders in that community are, who the most trustworthy voices are, and a recommendation or advice from a community leader, someone that you trust, is better than any information that you're, you're ever going to find in a Bing or Google search. And the second factor is engagement. You know, the internet is terrific. People may find you, they may find your product or your service through a Google search or a Bing search, wonderful. It might even lead to a sale, fantastic. However, doing business that way can, can be kind of impersonal. It's not the warmest and fuzziest way to start a relationship. You know, use communities to build a sense of engagement with your customers. It, and sometimes you, know, you can get the benefits of that engagement even when you know, it, it's not your community that you're, you're necessarily building up. In my day job, I use Microsoft technologies a lot, typically Excel, Access, and SQL Server. 
one of the great things about those products is that they have a number of vibrant, very active user communities. A person who uses those products can be very confident that if they run into a problem, if they've got a question, that they need help with something, chances are very good that they're going to be able to go to a forum and they'll be able to get the help that they're looking for, unless the help that they're looking for is to you know, build an application for them that's probably going to take you know, 10 weeks of effort to do. Yeah. So Microsoft benefits from that enormously because customers have that comfort level that if they run into problems, they'll be able to get help. You know, they're able to get more engaged with those products. You know, they're able to make a deeper investment in using those products, and it's going to drive customer loyalty to Microsoft. And this is true whether the communities that people are going to for help are sponsored by Microsoft or not sponsored by Microsoft. In, in fact, the, the communities that aren't explicitly sponsored by Microsoft might be even more helpful to Microsoft in the long run because since people know, well, you know, Mr. Excel is not a Microsoft thing, whatever advice I get there, I can trust. Limits and boundaries. Community engagement is terrific. You know, it can be a force multiplier, making you more powerful, you know, better, more effective, better able to do your job. But as with anything else, you need to understand what the limits are, what they should be. You know, how far should you go in your community engagement? Don't rely on communities for core competencies. Your core competencies are the things that differentiate you and your organization from the competition in the marketplace. If you're looking to communities to supply core competencies for you, you're doing it wrong. Okay? You know, don't, look to the, don't look to communities to, to deliver core capabilities that, that you really need to be uh, delivering yourself. I've come across a number of people in the forums who end up in a job that's way over their heads. And for a while, they think they can kind of cover it by you know, asking a lot of questions in the forums. And it might work for a while, but it usually doesn't last long, and it rarely ends well. Don't give away the store. You know, if you're a net contributor, you are giving something to the community. But make sure you're striking the right balance between that investment you're making in community engagement and the return that you're getting back for it. You know, time is a very valuable resource. You need to make sure that you know, you're getting an adequate return back on it because you, once you give your time, you can never, ever get it back. That doesn't mean don't invest in communities. It, it just means be smart about it. You know, and don't give away things that you know, people should have to pay for, right? You know, your, your products, your services, your knowledge, your time, it's valuable. You deserve to be paid for it. Always be courteous and professional. It should go without saying and yet, a lot of people seem to need reminders. Courtesy and professionalism matter. People see how you behave online, they remember how you behave online, and reputations can follow you. So follow the golden rule. Treat others as you would have them treat you. you know, be mindful that the person you're tempted to flame today might be the person that you need to answer your question tomorrow. And be sure to understand the culture of whatever community you choose to participate in. You know, uh, any community is a culture into itself, and every culture has its own mores, its own norms, its own standards of behavior. To be an effective member of that community, you need to understand what the rules are, not just the written rules. The unwritten rules can be just as important. Understand what's acceptable in that community and what isn't. And you know, don't do the stuff that's not acceptable. If you're building the community yourself, you get to make the rules. But if you're not, then you need to understand what the rules are before jumping in with both feet. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much. All right. That's great. Thank you.